Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter where it's all about making better videos. And today we're gonna look at the Sony XLR A2M, which I always get backward. Simply put, it gives you two XLR ports, three amps, two channels, a microphone, and uh, lots of goodies. And I will say, when I decided to go ahead and review this, I was planning on hating on it pretty good because of the price, um, but I've come to be a little fond of this unit. So let's just go ahead and jump over to the bench, look at it, talk about some of the settings, we'll record with it, and then we'll close up with some final thoughts. All right, let's dig into the Sony XLR A2M. Um, I wanted to review this with all of the popularity of cameras like the A6300, the A7S II, the A7R, to um, all that good stuff. So this has been, you see this on these cameras and a lot of promotional stuff. So I wanted to go over how it works, um, whether or not you should buy it, some things I like and don't like, and yeah. So essentially, here it is, comes with a microphone. This is the EMC-XM1. This replaced the older uh, microphone that came with the old unit. And the beauty of this unit is on the previous model you had to have an external cable going to the hot shoe and this just had a cold shoe they've integrated that all together so if i remove this little plastic guard you can see all the pins there the pin out and i can go ahead and attach this to the top of the camera and then use this to tighten it down rock solid i can't believe how strong this is so i'm really happy with um you know how they engineered this mechanism which is very different from a standard um you know cold shoe attachment so um really strong you have your inputs here two xlr inputs um, this thing is metal so you're not gonna have any interference issues nice caps the caps don't get in the way and of course they have the locking pins with releases um here's where you would add your microphone <sighs> I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like none of us are going to use this. Maybe if we're just running around like this shooting B-roll. But for the most part, we're going to run our microphone. So I wish this was removable. If I bought one, someone would have to chain me up so I don't cut this off or something. Because I don't think I'd use this. But um, it is really nice. It's You can see how much metal is, is there. <clears throat> Locks really nicely. If I can actually get it on there. And then there's actually a little bit of rubber give. So that's instead of having a big honking thing with rubber bands, that's going to keep the mic from moving around. If we look on the other side here, here's really where most of the magic is. Nice protective screen. And if we open that up, um, we can see we have two channels. We have lots of different options here, and I'm going to go through them because I know this can be a lot of kind of confusing for, you know, people who aren't as familiar with uh, audio equipment. So obviously here we have our level adjustments. Um, they're really smooth. So if you're used to dials like this on the Canon C100, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. These are really nice. I, I applaud them for adding, you know, a little bit of uh, fluidity. They're, they feel nice and dampened they're not really zippy um, which on, on the c100 it's very hard to do that just make minute adjustments it's very zippy so good job sony um, let's start on the left when you hook up microphones you have a couple options um, if you hook up one microphone to channel one or input one um, you're going to have stereo but if you need two microphones, you would flip this up to channel one and two, and then input one would be on the left, input two would be on the right. So in post, you would have two different levels. So if one of your interviewees has a microphone and they're really loud, and your other guy's lower, you could balance that out in post, then take each of those individual mono signals and then split them to dual mono. That way you have stereo for each of the microphones, if that makes sense. For each uh, input, we have auto or manual. I'd highly recommend sticking with manual. And then we have for each input, we can choose line, mic, or mic 48 volts or phantom power. So if you don't have a battery in your uh, XLR microphone and it's a phantom powered microphone, you're going to want to use that. Otherwise, if you have one of those microphones that has a battery in it and doesn't require phantom, make sure you have it set to 
mic. And then for those of you who don't know what line is, um, if you have, maybe you're shooting a wedding and the DJ hands you an XLR or whatever from his board and you want to record music, you could set it to channel one and two, have channel one be your microphone, maybe a lav and someone's singing or speaking or whatever. Um, and then for the DJ's uh, output, you can switch it to line because that level's much higher, whereas microphone levels are very, very low. So if you have a line input, um, you want to set it to line. So before we talk about attenuation or this ATT, let's go ahead and plug in the microphone and get this guy powered up. All right, so we have things powered up and I turned up the levels. Let's go to five. And we don't see anything, and that's because we need to feed 48 volts or phantom power to the microphone. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to turn on mic 48. We have it set to channel 1. And there we go. Now we have levels. So now let's play with the attenuation. So we're at 0 dB right now. We have 0, 10, and 20. If we watch my levels, I'll speak consistently, and I'm switching it to 10 you can see it dropped down a little bit and again i switched it to 20. so the attenuation or what attenuation does is it's kind of the opposite of a preamp it will cut down your levels so if you have a really hot signal coming in you can drop that down most of us won't have that problem so it's probably best to set it to zero and i'm pretty happy with levels um even from here the microphone's facing away from me so I'm behind the microphone essentially and about two feet away, which is pretty much the worst uh, place to be. And I'm looking pretty good at four. So that means it's going to be really great when I set this up properly and have good levels. Um, so uh, that looks really, really good. I'm very happy with that. So that's mic attenuation. So you can drop those down. And on the far right, we have our low cut filter. So that is an overview of the actual unit. Let's go ahead and set this up and do a quick recording and uh, see what it sounds like. And then after that, we'll do a quick wrap up. All right, so here we are in an interview setup. I have the microphone, uh, what would be just out of frame, I'm showing you guys just so you can see what's going on. And I could probably get the microphone even closer. Right now I am at the third mark on the dial for input one and no attenuation. Um, I tried five and it was definitely a little too hot. So hopefully this will work out. My HDMI cable doesn't seem to like the A6300, so I can't actually see my levels from over here. So I have to keep going back and checking the camera. But if number three works on here, that's pretty great. That means we have lots of headroom for different microphone situations. So this is normally how I'd have things set up for a documentary style interview. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. Let's see what it sounds like. So time for some final thoughts on this unit. Um, I was very skeptical at first. I figured it would work fine. I just wasn't impressed with the cost. You get a small microphone, a little unit that has no way to do headphone inputs with something like an A6300, and it costs $600. Now it's more like $500. There's a lot of discounts out there. Um, and to me, it was an opportunity cost thing. So you get this for five, 600 bucks. What else could you buy with that? You could buy um, you know, juice link, and then you could also pick up a Rode VideoMic Pro, which is a really handy little microphone. And um, there's other things you could go with it. The other thing I didn't really like was uh, proprietarity. You can only use this with Sony cameras. So I couldn't take this and throw it on my GH4 or some Canon camera. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, I think the resale value is probably still pretty good. So if you ended up selling this, you'd probably be fine. You'd be able to get your some money back at least. So I wasn't wild about that. And then there's a little thing or a couple little things. It's very difficult to get the microphone off with two hands uh, or the pull the XLRs out of the sockets and unlock them. It can be a little finicky. And then the other thing I think is a missed opportunity is the top of this thing. It is barren, man. There's just nothing up here and it's a big flat surface. I think this would have been a great opportunity for another cold shoe mount. Um, I would have loved to be able to plop a Rode, you know, filmmakers kit receiver up here, but I can't. So I have to build upon this to make something bigger to accommodate things like that. So I think that would have been a nice little addition to have a way to mount some accessories on top of the unit. 
all of that said, um, it is a great unit. The microphone's fantastic. I've done a lot of testing with this compared to all of my Rode shotgun microphones, uh, four, four plus, which are awesome microphones. And it does a pretty good job. It's small. Um, it's not proprietary, so you could plug it into anything and use it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a nice size too. Um, I prefer juice links preamps. I think they're quieter and they're just better, but it's hard to get something in this form factor. This is a great, great little kit to have this small thing here. I wish the microphone mount was removable. I, I think it's sexy just to have a little tiny box here and then run my microphone to where I want it, which is right up here out of frame. Yeah, so I think it's a good idea to pick this guy up. If you want really great quality audio, you maybe need a microphone as well, and you plan on sticking with the Sony platform for a while at least. Um, if you're not sure about Sony, maybe look at some other options. But uh, all that is to say, great little unit, performs well, the microphone's great, and uh, on Sony cameras, it's really, really fantastic. So that does it for this review. Make sure you check the description for a link to this guy, and please subscribe to get new videos here at DSLR Video Shooter. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.